Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know if you all are excited about this as I am, but Rogue Swift came out freaking flexing today. Now, as you all know, I am a huge OLED display lover. And I've said that several times throughout all of my videos and that's why I'm, I, I'm still not loud because I just don't get loud, but I'm louder than normal. Um, so Rogue came out with a 48 inch OLED and a 42 inch OLED gaming monitor to be released this year in 2022. Now, I don't know how much of my channel you have seen before, but if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that that display right behind me back there, which is the LG 27 GP 950 B is an IPS LED or LCD panel um, by LG, my favorite manufacturers, I've, I've always said. Um, but I have that there and I still haven't done a review on that. Still got to review it, get a review out for you all, but I want to make sure it's accurate and I've used it long enough to be able to know what I'm talking about. Anyway, anyway, that is a placeholder for the LG 42 inch OLED TV that's going to be coming out this year because as you all know, my main or some of you know, my main setup is a 48 inch LG CX that I've used now for almost two years. And so, um, I built my laptop setup behind me. Um, with the intent that I was going to originally use that 42 inch, I thought it was going to come out this year, but it's going to come out next year. But anyway, anyway, roll just threw a wrench in those plans. There's still more details to come out, right? Because as I said, with my one year CX review is that there's a lot of benefits that comes with using a smart television as your monitor, if it can withstand the needs of a PC user. However, I'm anxious to see and excited to see what Rogue is bringing to the table because this is not like a lower tier, you know, this time, this is their top of the line brand, if you will, for that company and what they're going to be offering to consumers. And so um, first and foremost, they came out punching. They literally came out saying that basically your current displays are not up to snuff and they don't basically do what is needed by a PC user, which is true in most cases. Um, but they started off with the anti-glare. And so again, at the second video in a row that I had to reference my new TV gaming setup, the reason I kept my Hisense H9G is because that room gets extremely, extremely bright. And so because of that, I, I wanted to use a LED panel or LCD panel that can go up, you know, a decent amount of brightness. This one they're saying is going to go up to 900 peak brightness, um, which is freaking crazy. But not only that, it has a layer of anti-reflection. And so one of the things now in my main setup in front of me is that whenever there's a light or something like that in the background, I have to like try to change my exposure. I have to try to make my lights, you know, disappear. I have to get the angle quite right and stuff like that from a recording standpoint. But from a gaming standpoint, it's true. Like when the sunlight comes through my main window, I keep my shutter closed all day because of the brightness of there. But so I'm excited to see what they're able to offer and how good that actual anti reflection um, protection is on that on, on the new OLEDs. And moving on to, you know, I guess continuing on from the conversation around the screen and reflection and the room and things like that. These are supposed to have up to 900 nits brightness. Now I know when you look at TVs like the H9G or the, the P uh, series, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> look, I'm so excited. I'm forgetting names. Um, but when you look at those and they have 2000 nits or 2,500 nits or in between that 2000, 2,500 nits range, um, it's crazy to think that 900 nits is a plus, but on an OLED screen where it is true black versus color and lit pixels versus the turned off pixels, 900 nits is going to be a really big jump for a lot of you that may have not updated your television to the newest GX or even the Evo or uh, you know versions of the OLEDs by LG. And so that's gonna be a really huge increase. And when you think about, as I, I did my one year review on the OLED, you just cannot beat contrast and color and now particularly potentially brightness um, level um, mixed in with that from an OLED screen on any other panel. It does not matter the technology. There is not a better technology than OLED right now when it comes to displaying a perfect picture. And so I am so excited to see what this I, I keep saying that. I got to stop saying that. I don't, I got to make them work for the, <laughs> for the recommendation. Next, they went into 
the fact that the HDMI 2.1 ports in the middle of all of this controversy around HDMI 2.1 and what that means going forward, they basically are saying we are giving you a true HDMI 2.1 with the full bandwidth. Now, this isn't a huge deal for most of the top tier displays as you really won't use that bandwidth, but what it changes is, is that this display is supposed to have a true 10 bit color and this is without chroma subsampling so chroma subsampling is basically a it's compressing the signal sent from the from the gaming system to the display it's compressing it down to make it easier to transfer through the HDMI 2.1 for lack of better terms right there's a whole bunch of stuff in between there but the chroma subsampling makes the color not pop as much as it should based on the way the content creator is expecting it to and so being able to have true 10 bit color full 2. Point, uh, HDMI 2.1 48 gigabytes per second bandwidth will unlock the potential for all of the gaming features in the future that we've all been promised 8k you know 60 and um, you know a true 4k 120 with the best possible picture um, possible okay and moving away from the 10-bit true color um, basically moving into how accurate it is it has a 98% DCI p3 color gamut and a 0 0.1 millisecond greater gray response time like this i mean again just oled panels are the best possible they just have their own you know issues with the potential retention and burn in if you will and so outside of that they are basically perfect panels um anxious to see what that will look like next year as these or this year as these release so final thoughts i know some of you are still saying 42 inches is too big 48 inches is too big and you got to think about um these panels are created by lg displays they're created by one manufacturer they're not created by uh, these different gaming companies that are going to be using these as monitors and so with that being said they're made by LG Display for televisions to be created. They're not necessarily custom made for the gaming industry. The gaming industry is just now starting to see that there's a need for this. And so they are starting to buy these or purchase these panels from LG Displays as well to make their own gaming monitors. But these are not being created to be monitors. The company, the gaming companies are just buying the panels and then making monitors out of them. And so keep that in mind as we start to adopt these more in the gaming industry, then it will make more sense for LG to start creating more manufacturing space and more molds and more cut molds and different things like that. Not only that, the way that the OLED displays are cut is different than an IP um, LCD panel and all of those different things because of the technology. And so you can't just say, I want a 27 inch OLED and then they're going to be able to create one. It's years of movement and change and planning that goes into the manufacturing of an OLED display. So with that being said, I'm out of here for now. Again, I'm going to try to cover as much of this as possible with my day job and children and all that stuff. It's really hard to cover something like this at my channel size. So I would really appreciate if you were to like and subscribe and help the channel grow so that eventually one day I will be able to do this more. <laughs> um, but thank you for your time. Let me know any questions or, or thoughts in the comment section below. Again, I currently have an OLED display for my main monitor, 48 inch LG CX. We'll continue to use an OLED for my main display. And this is really, really exciting. I don't know if it changes the fact you know my plans to buy the 42 inch for back there yet um really need to see the specs across both um uh both displays and see which one makes more sense as that one is a gaming and productivity um or editing station only so um don't really watch tv at that station so anxious to see what my what my decision will be towards the end of this year so again like share and subscribe um and as always stay cozy in that crazy world and i will see you in the next video Peace.